Alright, this is just a quick tying video on how to uh, tie the JJ's damsel nymph. Take a little .30 lead and wrap it in a U on the shank. Uh, do this to widen the thorax instead of wrapping lead around the shank. Um, it's about the equivalent of 10 turns of .15. So you just secure one side down, fold it over. Get it squeezed down so it rides on both sides of the shank and clip it to length here. And then just secure it down fully. You can obviously use a lead substitute. Uh, I just have a lot of lead wire left over. Before you get it too tight, you can always slide it up or down the shank as needed. You want it pretty much in the mid part of the shank. That's where you're going to start the thorax on this. Get it smashed down as much as you can. Give it some good wraps. Stop the thread behind it. Grab your super glue and throw a little dab of super glue on there. That'll keep it from rotating once you get the fly in place. Don't need a lot here, just a little dab. For the back body, we're going to do a, a woven body using embroidery thread. Use a 732 olive and a 610 brown. The olive will be the belly, the brown will be the back. Clip off about five or six inches of thread. Um, I leave a little tag at the top, fold it over, and that helps the transition between the the body and the lead. Wrap it down a little farther than where you would start because it does ride up a little bit. And then just go ahead and fold over the, the tail ends here, wrap them down. Um, everything's going to get covered, so nothing has to be pretty here. You're just getting it down. I'm going to go ahead and grab your whip finish and uh, whip finish your fly here in the middle just with a couple wraps and go ahead and cut your thread we're going to tie this next section of the fly without the thread getting in the way rotate your vise uh, so that it's pointing at you it'll make it a lot easier to tie these basically you're going to take the light thread over the dark thread and just tie an overhand knot simple overhand knot and then you're going to split the top of the knot and put the dark thread on top, the light thread on the bottom, and then just go ahead and tighten it down. And you're going to repeat this all the way up to the lead. Always have the light color on top of the dark color. Um, that'll keep your knots, so that's built basically building granny knots all the way down the, the shank, and keeps your dark color on top and your light color on the bottom. And then builds the little side segments with the, uh, the dark and the light there. If you wanted to, you can add a third strand of string, and as you're tying the back here, every other knot, the string stays on top, and every other knot, you'll either tie it under the string or over the string, and so it'll kind of, you know, serpentine up and over the knots each one, and that, that does a nice effect in giving you a another colored dot along the back, which is really handy. Um, you can also do it for the belly. Uh, it's just a little bit more work makes it a little bit more tedious tying these knots. So just keep tying the knots all the way up to the lead. Um, you don't want to go up onto the lead, just go ahead and go right up to the end of it. If you've got a half space, go ahead and throw one more knot in just to, to get it nice and tight. And each time you, uh, you do these, you want to pull them tight. This will be the last knot here. Uh, when you are putting it on, watch for the strings that go underneath the, the shank like that. Um, it'll mess it up for you. So, uh, We can do one more knot there just to fill up the gap between the lead and the, the end of the body. Pull it nice and tight. And that's the end of this section. Go ahead and rotate your vise back around and then you're going to start your thread again right over the lead wraps here and I find it easier to flip the hook upside down and secure the lines on the bottom it, uh, it tends to make the knots a little neater for me uh, also adds a little roundness to the bottom of the thorax there instead of at the top because you've already got your wing case to do that for you 
and just run your sh your thread as close to the end of the knots there. It'll kind of fall in the gap between the lead and the threads, and uh, it'll secure it down really good. Go ahead and clip your uh, your embroidery threads, and then just secure the ends down. Again, nothing fancy here. We're going to get it all covered up with dubbing here in a few minutes anyways. So bring your uh, thread up to about midway in the thorax and you're going to go ahead and grab yourself a piece of pheasant tail fiber, natural or pretty much any color or whatever shell back you want to use. I grab about a quarter inch of fibers here and then uh, clip them off. I don't worry about keeping them all straight. They just kind of get pulled around in there anyways. So go ahead and lay that down on the top of the shank, get it secured. You're going to wrap back all the way to the end of the lead where the body starts. And just go ahead and cover your ends and you're going to stop your thread right at the beginning of the lead. Um, you're going to leave yourself that little gap in the eye there is where you want that final taper. We're going to go ahead and tie in the goose by it legs here and what I do is I leave them on the quill so I pick off uh, three legs for these you know three on each side go ahead and separate those up and then just clip them right underneath that third one and it'll leave them on the quill it makes them s so much easier to handle than trying to tie in three individual slippery goose by its um, I take a little dab of super glue on the side of the lead, very small. If you use too much, it'll go ahead and uh, it'll soak into the, the biots and make them unusable. So you just want to take a little drop of super glue on the side, and that'll help to stick them on the side rather than having them roll over uh, as you're using them. They still tend to roll over a bit, but as long as they're mostly on the side, you can manage them and they'll stay in the right position. I measure so that the longest uh, biot is basically to the end of the body. Um, you can go shorter or longer depending on how you like your legs. I like them long, they look real buggy. So just, you know, three or four wraps, keep that on that side. Um, not too hard. If you pull too hard, they will roll over. You're going to get a chance to go ahead and secure them down here in just a second. So again, pull off three by its. Oops, I had four here. Count them, get three going. Stick your scissors underneath that last one and clip them, and leave them on the the quill there. Another little drop of super glue. We'll get these set on there and secured down pretty good. Once you get about two wraps on, you can start to apply pressure to your thread to help uh, get those on there and, and get them more secure. Start adding some pressure, pull in a little bit. You don't need too many wraps, but you are going to cover up the ends here once you clip off the the bases. And again, all this, you know, nothing has to be pretty. It's it's all going to get covered up by dubbing here in a second. So just make sure it's secure. Sometimes those quills don't like the cut with the uh, dull scissors. Don't pull them. Make sure you cut them. If you pull them, they'll slide out of position and nothing will work. And I throw a little drop of super glue. Again, not too much or it'll soak up the quill. Uh, just on the threads and the ends of the, qu of the, the goose by it's there. Once that dries, that'll keep them locked in place and from pulling out once your fly is made. A little bit of super glue as you go through these flies will definitely help keep them uh, more durable down the road. Some people uh, say that super glue can be smelled by the fish. I've never had that problem. I take a little bit of straw, uh, cut it. This will be basically to hold the goose bites out of the way as you're putting on your first ball of dubbing. Um, otherwise they can tend to get in your way and really aggravate you. So just take your bodkin and slide the uh, slide the goose by its up and forward and then just slide your straw up over the ends. You can use this uh, to help give you that third hand on a lot of different flies. And 
the pressure from the bites trying to open back up will keep the straw in place. Then just go ahead and uh, move your thread back and behind and all the way back up to the the base of the wing case there. And we're going to go ahead and start dubbing. I'm just using a uh, peacock colored, I guess, sparkle dubbing. Um, you can use, you know, whatever you're trying to imitate. Semi Seal works really good. Uh, it's available in a lot of nice colors. Black, especially if you're tying uh, big stone flies or something like that. And I'll tend to uh, kind of overload the dubbing a bit because I want these to be big and buggy. You also want this ball in the back to be nice and big, and that, that keeps your legs from just riding all the way along the body. It, it forces them to stick out a bit and makes it look, you know, a little buggier. So once you get a good ball going, pop off your straw, go ahead and uh, fold back your first pair of legs there, and uh, you usually have to pull on them a little bit to get them in the right position for you. Just throw a wrap of thread around them, um, and then you can pull on them a little bit better and get them into the right position. Um, as long as they're laying back and splayed, and then just go ahead and uh, continue to dub another little uh, ball, not quite as big, behind this one and uh, you're going to just go over the, the base of the legs here and this will separate the first pair of legs from the second pair you're going to do the same thing for the third pair so once you get this ball then go ahead and fold up your next pair of legs get them set up in position and you can either tie them in one at a time or grab them both and get them both tied in either way works And a little wax on your thread will definitely help with the slippery bites. Um, I didn't have any wax with me right now, so just kind of struggling with the thread sliding off the slippery guys here. Just throw a little bit more dubbing on, and then you're going to dub for your uh, your last little separator bundle between the legs here. This one won't need to be quite as big as the first two. You know, usually three or four wraps of dubbing is all you need. And you're going to fold over that last set of legs and then just move your thread up in front of them. You're going to have a ball of dubbing here that's going to hold on to them. Um, again, wax would have helped to grab hold of those, but uh, it'll be fine. The dubbing that goes in front will hold them down. You're going to go ahead and grab your wind case, bring it over, and uh, get it secured. Once you have it secured, just clip off the excess, and then you're going to go ahead and uh, throw a little bit more dubbing here for the uh, the front of the fly. Damsel nymphs, when you uh, when you look at them in nature, have a pretty big head going on them. So I, I like to dub these kind of big and wide, so they have that big head look going. You want to get enough dubbing so that you get, you know, all the way down to the eye of the fly, and then you're going to dub back just a little black, black head to keep everything, in, you know, nice and tidy. And you can add a tail to these. A little, uh, little puff of marabou on the tail would definitely simulate the, the tails of a damselfly. Um, I don't think they're necessarily needed, but uh, definitely an, an option you can put in there. Just go ahead and throw a few wraps to get things secured and away from the eye and go ahead and whip finish with a few turns here. You can add head cement if that's what you like. Uh, I usually don't head cement my flies. It's They either last or they don't. I'm going to need to do a little cleanup obviously. You can see all the straggling uh, dubbing. You can use your scissors and clip some away and then usually just pulling on it will kind of get rid of most of the longer fibers that have strayed out. But you don't want to shave it down and get it too uh, too perfect because you know it is a bug. You want it to look buggy. You want it to look uh, have some movement in the water, and that's what that dubbing will do. 
you can uh, go back, make sure your legs are splayed, get them separated. A lot of times, just adding a little bend to the bio will get it to stand out properly. Again, just you know, pinch some dubbing to get it nice and clean, and that's a completed uh, JJ's damsel fly. Uh, these work pretty good here in Arizona. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.